King's College Choir began with the foundation of King's College itself by Henry VI in the 1440s because he wanted to have music to adorn the services which were going to take place in his wonderful chapel. And it has an almost unbroken history since then. Well, I think for lots of people, um, this service and, and the experience of, of queuing outside Kings and coming to this particular event is a, is a massive part of Christmas. And it's a, it's a privilege to be able to be part of that experience for so many people, either here uh, camping out in the icy conditions or listening to it on the radio. The choir is probably best known for the Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols, which happens each Christmas Eve at three o'clock. This has a long history. The actual order of service began at Truro Cathedral, but it soon came to King's at the instigation of Dean Eric Milner White, who had come back from the First World War where he was an army chaplain, and he wanted to introduce what he felt was a more stimulating service for people to enjoy at Christmas time. The structure of the service is that there are nine lessons which take us through from the book of Genesis to the prologue to St John's Gospel, famously beginning, in the beginning was the word. And my job is to choose carols which the choir can sing after each reading, which comment upon them and hopefully illuminate the meaning. I think it's very important. I mean, I remember watching uh, the TV service when I was little and then listening to the radio and just thinking, wow, it, like, it must be amazing to, to be there. So for me, it's quite special that I, I am actually you know, doing this thing that I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to do when I was, when I was a child? Well, the idea of this new project and the launch of our own label came together, I suppose, for a number of reasons. Partly because it's an idea that's in the air today. Very attractive also was the idea that we would be able to have real control over the artistic content. Uh, so we can decide what we want to record and when and who's going to do it and how we're going to do it and how we're going to present it. So that's a really exciting new vista that's opening up for us. Well, when I came here in 1982, I thought it would be a really good idea to try to nourish this great tradition, which I certainly wanted to continue, with new material. So I had the idea of commissioning annually a carol from a leading composer, and we've now got some 30 or so of those. And the idea is to have a composer who isn't just writing church music, but a composer who's writing for the opera or chamber music or orchestral music, a really you know, red-blooded composer who will give us a good challenge to get our teeth into.
if you have a, a strong tradition in any way, you can feel it in everything you do and all the services you do. And to be able to sing regularly to lots of people is very special, but to be able to sing regularly to lots of people who have such esteem of the choir and to have such kind of a strong identity and can bond with the choir in, in their kind of their perception of it is just such an amazing experience.